It almost feels like for me as a WWE fan at this point in time that I'm really WrestleMania hopping. Now, what I mean is, is that WrestleMania is the only show of the year that I truly fully look forward to. Now, I just mentioned in the last video on this channel that I was looking forward to Survivor Series a little bit, but there are different elements at play there. But the one show that I truly, truly get amped up and pumped up and excited for no matter what is WrestleMania, because it's WrestleMania, because of what it means and what it represents and all the things that go along with it. The Hall of Fame weekend, you know, for many of you, the NXT show that happens on that weekend. You've got the Hall of Fame, NXT, and then, of course, WrestleMania, where you always go back to being a kid again and you hope that something big and magical and spectacular happens, whether it's body slamming Andre the Giant, whether it's the era of Austin 316 beginning, whether it's something along the lines of, shit, I don't know. I mean, you could talk about Daniel Bryan having his moment at WrestleMania 30 for a lot of you. You know, and there are all, all these different moments in time over the years at WrestleMania that make WrestleMania special and truly stand out above the rest. And I feel like for me now as a wrestling fan, because the product is so bad to me on such a consistent basis and does so little to appeal to me, nor does it care to frankly appeal to me and my wrestling sensibilities, that the only hope that I have is that I can get to WrestleMania and it's a good show and it's enough to hold me over for another year until we get to the next WrestleMania. So I'm literally just hopping from one WrestleMania to the next. And that's what I'm expecting me to keep me alive as a WWE and wrestling fan. I don't know how much longer that strategy is going to be very effective. So, I'm starting already, which is natural, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, looking ahead to WrestleMania 33 and trying to piece together what could happen, you know, figure out what may be in the works. And I got to say right now, the excitement level for 33 is not all that particularly high. You know, it, Granted, based off of the way things are right now, there are a lot of things that could change in the next four plus months. So what I could envision being uh, potentially the featured matches of WrestleMania right now, some of them may change, all of them may change, none of them may change in the next four, four and a half months. But when you look at the potential for the card that we could get, and this is some based off of just where I could see the company heading, some based off of stuff you may have read and heard, some just thinking, you know, where... I think the company might be thinking or where things are pointing. Here's kind of what I'm looking at in terms of the main featured matches on the WrestleMania 33 card, potentially. You could have John Cena versus AJ Styles for the WWE title with Cena finally getting his 16th world championship. We could get Brock Lesnar versus Shane McMahon. Randy Orton versus The Undertaker. Bayley versus Charlotte for the Raw Women's title. Triple H versus Seth Rollins. Maybe some match featuring the Universal title, whether that's Kevin Owens as the champion or somebody else. Maybe Jericho is involved. Who knows? Uh, there could be a Goldberg match involved. And just, as I look at it right now, there's not a lot that gets me all that particularly worked up or excited. It just doesn't. You know, Brock Lesnar versus Shane McMahon. You know, unless that's where you would incorporate a Goldberg and he would help fuck Brock and help Shane get over or go over, maybe. But even then, in that particular case, we didn't have Brock Lesnar end the streak and build him up like a fucking monster to just have The Undertaker beat him in controversial fashion and then for the owner's kid to sit there and beat him at WrestleMania 33. That would just reek of the old territorial mindset of if the owner can't beat him, then the owner's kid is going to get pounded down your fucking throat. And frankly, at this point in time, any match with Brock Lesnar, it's stomp around like a moron, suplex, repeat. Same finish, predictable, guy always wins. It's fucking boring. I'm tired of the Brockheads saying it's anything other than fucking boring. Oh, he's such a big special attraction. Eat shit, he is not. They made him into yet another non-attraction because that's what the WWE does. So I have very little interest in seeing Shane McMahon bump around just to put Brock Lesnar over. John Cena versus AJ Styles. You know, the company would really be playing with fire here because while AJ Styles may be a good world champion, putting Cena in this spot to get his 16th world title against the old TNA guy, you could get quite a bit of backlash here. Um, these guys have had good matches, but again, it doesn't feel special. It's not what it should be. It's like last year. 
Chris Jericho, AJ Styles should not have touched once leading up to WrestleMania. And instead, they wrestled multiple times. One of the things about WrestleMania to me that was special is that you get the big matches where these guys haven't touched, they haven't wrestled before. It's something new, something fresh, something different. Brock Lesnar and Shane McMahon would at least have that, you would think, in theory. But John Cena versus AJ Styles would not. Same thing with Randy Orton versus The Undertaker. I understand the thought process behind putting a Randy Orton in the ring with The Undertaker because you've got a veteran in Randy Orton that could take care of Taker, protect Taker, work with Taker, help call the match with Taker, and probably get the match over in the way they need to. But then that incorporates old Wyatt family bullshit that we've already been through that really didn't freaking work between him and Taker. And I've seen Randy Orton wrestle The Undertaker before. Granted, it was a really good match at WrestleMania 21, but I just don't really have an interest in seeing this, especially if you've got Orton turned heel. I just don't. You know, Bailey versus Charlotte, you know, would that be the point in time they'd finally have Charlotte get pinned at a fucking pay-per-view? You know, at that point in time, it'd be nice to see Bailey win, but I don't have a lot of interest in seeing that match. Frankly, whoever wrestles for the Universal title is a footnote to me at this point in time. The only match that I could see because of the length of period of time that it's been building and the amount of story invested behind it and the different ways that you can work it, by far to me the most interesting and compelling match, if the company is even patient enough to wait that long to get to this moment, has got to be Triple H versus Seth Rollins. It has the potential to be the match with by far the best story the most interesting characters involved in the most interesting story on the way to WrestleMania, and in my opinion, would have the potential to also be the match of the night. Far and away. I just... We're in a position again where the match I'm looking forward to again at WrestleMania is a God match! Ugh! When are we going to get to that point in time where we can look forward to another match that doesn't feature God? Ugh! Now, I understand, according to the books of the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley, the Levesque says it shall be done. It will be done. He wants that big featured WrestleMania match. Here it is. And I would expect it to be really good. But, I mean, you just think about some of the great WrestleMania cards over the years. And even in this one, you say from a name recognition standpoint it's got name power to it it's got triple h still it's got brock lesnar still it's got john cena you throw in aj styles now it's got shane mcmahon it's got randy orton it's got the undertaker it could potentially have a goldberg maybe the rock is involved in some ancillary type of way you have the potential for all these big names to be on this show it's not the most star-studded card ever but there is some name power there and it just looks like, to me, it could potentially produce a really underwhelming WrestleMania. Now, some will probably go once 33 happens and look at some of these matches if they happen, and they'll get tricked into thinking Brock and Shane is great because Shane did some crazy fucking spot to get the shit over. People will probably talk about how good the Cena-Styles match was until the finish because Cena won, and people are somehow surprised that he would beat the TNA guy at WrestleMania to win his 16th world title. People will probably talk about how Orton and Taker was safe and it was okay, but it wasn't great. It just really wasn't much purpose to the match, and it wasn't as good as the one at 21. You know, it just – I just look at this show, and it right now the way it's constructed leaves me wanting and wishing for something that I'm probably not going to get. It leaves me wanting for so much more. And frankly, this show could be so much more. And I just don't think it's going to be. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Because as a WrestleMania hopper right now, it's the one hope I have to be able to keep some level of interest all throughout 2017 in WWE is WrestleMania 33 has got to be good. I just don't know that it's going to be. And that's sad.